Okay, is it working now? Cool. Look at that. There was not enough connection earlier, but it's good. Um, I'm totally on the side of the road, <laughs> but I got a bit inspired. Um, so I thought I would just um, share that with you guys quickly. I've seen a mom this morning, a lovely mama. Um, I'm going to close my windows so you don't hear the cars too much. It's going to get really hot here, but that's okay. Um, yeah, so I, I've met with um, a lovely mama this morning. I was... Um, offering her a consultation and one of her questions was how can I prepare my um, one and a half two years old child uh, for the new baby that is coming because she was pregnant obviously um, so what I want to share with you guys is something that I really loved when I read it is um, how Alyssa Salter who's the creator of Aware Parenting He's, she's making a bit of a comparison, right? So, you know how very often when we're about to have a new baby, we tell our toddler that it's going to be awesome to have a new baby at home, that you're going to play together and you're going to have lots of fun. And yeah, it's gonna, just going to be great. And Alisa thought, hold on. What if your husband were telling you, hey, you're going to have a new wife coming at home um, next month. Um, you're going to love her. It's just going to be awesome. She's going to be in the house with you and she's going to share the bed with us. And this new wife will be able to you know, play with your computer and you guys will have to share the kitchen together and you're just going to love her. It's just going to be awesome. And... <laughs> I found that is a really good comparison, right? We're trying to tell our child that, yeah, you're going to just love her and, and it's just going to be awesome. But the truth is that it is not like that at first. You know, it's it's true that they might enjoy playing together, you know, after a year or two. But a year or two is such a long time for a toddler or three or four years old that it will feel like an eternity to him. And um, so telling him that it's just going to be awesome is actually not really realistic, right? So um, there's someone, hi. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not really realistic to tell him that, you know, it's just going to be awesome. We, I think it, we're better saying the truth and, you know, preparing him for what it's really going to be and I'm getting a bit hot in the car um, yeah it's it is going to be challenging at first um, mommy is going to spend lots of time with the new baby she won't have as much time you know to play um, she might have to stay in bed for a little bit um, the new baby will breastfeed a lot um, all those things that are real and that are true I think if we prepare our child telling him all those things um, it would avoid the big shock that he might have when the baby arrives right because if you just tell him that it's going to be awesome and you're going to play together and then that tiny baby arrives and he's all day long on mommy and mommy can't play with me anymore and it's going to be really frustrating and really yeah like a shock for him so I think it's better to prepare and you know tell him the truth and um, of course you can you know if all um, involve him in all the preparation um, explaining where the baby is going to sleep and when the baby is here you can always involve him in like you know you want to help me put the nappy on or you want to do this or that um, without forcing forcing anything to him obviously he's not responsible for the baby but um, just involving him in the whole situation would be good um, another thing we can recommend as well is to try to keep a few minutes you know every day or every second day whenever we can to really play with the the older child 
I might close here because it's a bit noisy. You know, five to ten minutes to really connect with the old, older child. So he feels that he still matters to you, that he still, um, that you still care for him, um, and that you really want to play with him. And you know, those five or ten minutes of playing, a one-on-one -on -one time, just special time without the baby. If you can, you know, leave the baby with daddy or with a friend for a little bit. And just take your older older child and tell him we've got 10 minutes just you and me what would you like to do and welcome whichever play you wants to um whichever game he wants to play at or if he wants to talk or if he wants to cry because he might just need to let some frustrations out and this is the next point that i want to get to is that it is going to be you know it is going to be frustrating for your child at first um, and I think it is very important that we acknowledge his feelings and that we let him express those feelings um, so he might need to express those feelings through crying through raging through having massive tantrums and the best we can do to help him deal with the situation of not having mommy just for himself <laughs> is to stay with him while he's having a tantrum accept his crying, um, you know, acknowledging, I see you're really sad right now because mommy can't play with you right now because she's taking care of the baby or I see you're very frustrated right now. I feel you, I see you angry. Um, you're missing your mommy very much, right? You really miss her. Um, you know, it's, I think it's important to do that so your f child feels understood and accepted and loved um, so yeah that's something we would definitely recommend to really accept all the feelings that are that are coming up for him and stay with him while he's expressing his rage and his frustration which is totally normal um, and yeah was there anything else I wanted to recommend um, so special time with your child, accepting his crying and just telling him the truth from the beginning, you know, that it's not going to be much fun maybe at first, but then, you know, a bit later or much later, we'll be able to play together. This is fine um, to say as well. But yeah, really be offering a realistic picture to the child, I think is more honest. Um, and we'll avoid him to just be really, really shocked when the baby actually comes. And you'll see that, you know, if your child is allowed to let all the big feelings he has regarding his sister or his little brother, if he's allowed to cry and rage and tell how frustrating he is, then he won't need to take that frustration and this anger. He won't need to act on this frustration and and on this anger onto his brother or sister because very often it's it's what's happening with you know siblings um, rivalries that there is frustration there is anger that is not healthily expressed for crying and or laughing and so the child is taking his frustration and his anger onto the baby and it's why they you know start hitting the baby and and this is not what we want. So the more we allow him to let all his big feelings, which are absolutely valid to have, um, yeah, as much as he can let them out and be accepted and loved through that, then it will really reduce the chances of um, sibling rivalry and and make just parenting those two kids or three kids much, much easier. So... Yeah, that's what I wanted to share with you guys. And now I'm gonna keep driving. I'm almost home now. So cool. Thank you for coming and say hi, put a little love heart or a thumbs up, whatever you want under the video. Um, and let me know if that was useful. If you're pregnant and you uh, were a bit worried about that, let me know below. And um, that helps me to know if, you know, if what I'm doing is useful and I appreciate that. Cool. Thank you guys. Have a beautiful weekend. Bye.